Now that we've introduced the idea of assigning basis vectors to a reference frame and using those to orient ourselves within a dynamics problem, we have the capability of solving these problems with much more efficiency. And one of the primary ways that we gain efficiency and understanding as we're working these problems is to assign multiple reference frames to a single dynamic system. And the first thing we need to do is develop a way that we can connect the coordinates within each reference frame and the basis vectors within each reference frame to each other. So here we see that we have a reference frame A that has the basis A1, A2, and A3. And we have the reference frame B that has the basis B1, B2, and B3. Each of these reference frames shares a common origin, O, and then the rotation between the two reference frames is described by a single angle theta. And this is going to be true for all the problems that we do in this class because we're dealing only with planar motion. So then we create a sketch that includes all of the basis vectors. And so here we're showing the basis vectors in reference frame A, A1 and A2, and then in reference frame B, B1 and B2. And then they're oriented with respect to each other through the angle theta. And so notice also that this theta is a coordinate, and that theta has a positive direction because it's a coordinate. So positive theta, as it's defined here, is counterclockwise. And so our next step is to express each of these vectors as a function of the other vectors. So let's start with B1 and express it in terms of A1 and A2. So we'll first find the A1 component of B1. And to do that, let's project B1 onto the A1 axis. And we get that it's the magnitude 1 because that's the length of this unit vector. And then to project this, it'll be the cosine of theta. And then this is in the A1 direction. Next, we'll find the A2 component of B1. And so we project B1 onto the A2 axis. And so this will be the magnitude of 1 and then multiplied by sine theta in the A2 direction. We get rid of the magnitude 1's and then end up with the final expression where B1 is equal to cosine theta A1 plus sine theta A2. We'll follow a similar procedure to form an expression for B2, and to do that we'll project B2 onto the A1 axis. And this projection has a length of 1 sine theta, but notice that it's pointing in the negative A1 direction. Then we project B2 onto the A2 axis, and from it get the magnitude 1 cosine theta in the A2 direction. And so the expression that we get is B2 is equal to negative sine theta in the A1 direction plus cosine theta in the A2 direction. And now that we've created these mathematical relationships, let's put this in a form that makes it easier to use. And so we'll insert these into a transformation table. And in the table, we'll place all of our basis vectors. We'll have A1 and A2 along the top row and then B1 and B2 along the first column. And then what relates these two together is that B1 is related to A1 we see through cosine theta. And so we insert cosine theta into the cell that joins A1 and B1. Likewise, B1 is related to A2 through a positive sine theta. B2 is related to A1 through a negative sine theta and then B2 is related to A2 through a positive cosine theta. And what we've created here in this transformation table is a compact form that relates these basis vectors with each other. And the insides of the transformation table are actually the dot products, where we have A1 dotted with B1 is cosine theta, A2 dotted with B1 is sine theta, and so forth. And so we can quickly define these relationships. For example, A2 is equal to sine theta B1 plus cosine theta B2. 
and looking at our diagram to the right, these are both projections in the positive B1 direction and the positive B2 direction with the lengths that are equivalent to a sine theta and a cosine theta. A1 expressed in a B basis would be cosine theta in the B1 direction minus sine theta in the B2 direction. And looking at our diagram to the right, if we project A1 onto B1, it's a length of cosine theta in the positive B1 direction, and then A1 onto B2, it's a length of sine theta in the negative B2 direction. And so now we've added one more step to our process in our problem setup, in that after we define our basis vectors, assigning to each of the reference frames, now we need to create a transformation table similar to what we did here between the basis vectors. Follow these steps in which you draw the basis vectors and then create the transformation between them with these direction cosines that fit inside this table. The transformation table that we created here will be the most common one that we use in the problems. However, it's not true for all transformations. So that's why it's important to draw your vectors every time you create bases and then create a brand new transformation table for every problem.